Hi, I'm Layla Robinson from Peterson Portable Sawmills and I'm here in the somewhat lovely uh, Nakuru. The sun isn't shining for us today, but that's okay. We're out here testing a brand new 10-inch all-terrain sawmill, which is about to head off to uh, Tahiti next week. So we've brought it out to Aaron's property and we're just giving it a bit of a run-through. So I've got Aaron and Ezra uh, behind me and they've just um, run a couple of boards off and made sure that the mill's running nicely, which of course it is. And I'm going to grab them in a second and ask them a few questions. Um, there are some questions that repeatedly get asked by people who are looking at purchasing a mill, so we're going to run through some of those for you. Um, so the Peterson mills, are, they're basically custom made. So when you look at one of our price price lists you'll see that we've got a standard model and from there um, pretty much everything within the mill can be upgraded upgraded from the blade size to the motor size and with some of our mills also the track length. Um, they're really really easy to set up and pack down. Uh, just earlier we filmed a bit of a time lapse video which I'll make sure I put up on Facebook maybe later this evening um, which will show you uh, the guys <laughs> moving in fast pace um, setting the mill up. So we're just going to head over to Aaron and Ezra now and ask them a few questions. Hi guys, Hi, <laughs> thank you very much for doing this. I know that your forte is milling and um, you're just talking casually with people but Facebook's casual so we'll just keep it, yeah, <laughs> keep it good. Okay, so we're here with the 10 inch ATS um, it's got a what horsepower motor on it? Uh, 35 horsepower Vanguard. That's right, yep. Yeah. Um, and you guys have just set it up here in um, Aaron's paddock. How long roughly did that take to set up? About 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And um, is it fairly easy to line everything up? Yeah, it's like um, we use the, you know, the level on the skids and yeah. that, that sort of makes things a lot quicker. Um, also, Isra eyed up the track rails and so just to make sure they were in line with each other as well. Yeah, but yeah. But as long as you've got the, um, the tracks, you know, parallel to each other, mm. you're fine. Mm. Cool. Okay, thank you. Um, so we, I was just mentioning earlier that we we kind of custom make our mills, don't we, to the to the person's application. So this mill, you can choose a couple of different blade sizes. So what's the yep. options there? Well, this one, the bigger one's the ten inch. Yeah. And it also comes in a smaller eight inch. Okay. Model as well. Yeah. So is that just a bigger is better thing with the ten inch, or it allows them more versatility, or? Yeah. Um. So like a, going with a bigger blade just gives you a, a bit more scope you know that means that you can cut you know boards up to, to 250 millimeters you mm. know you know without having to double cut yeah yeah so it just gives the the owner a few more options you know especially if they're doing a bit of contract milling and and they want to sort of provide you know more products you know for the customers mm. um, a little bit more efficiently mm, cool mm. so if they did want to double cut on a peterson mill that's pretty easy eh, compared yeah. to some of the others yeah. out there so what would the um pro procedure i guess be for double cutting okay um so so basically uh, you know a lot of customers like the fact that it's um it's a, it's a it's pretty easy to to you know to set it up and, and double cut Genuinely, what we do is is we'll remove the shavings deflector. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. So that'll come off. So because with double cutting, we're using the the left hand side of the blade, okay, That's right, or yeah. the left hand part of the blade. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, what we would do is, um, but we would only remove that once we've done all our right hand side cutting. Okay. Right. Yeah. So basically, I would open the log cut my you know my four by twos or six by twos mm -hmm. and then work out where I want to do start my double cut mm -hmm. okay I'll do my do my double cut on the right hand side of the blade and once I've and then I'll you know once I've done that I'll then remove the shavings deflector mm -hmm. and then I'll wind it over say another say 10 inches mm -hmm. I want to do a 20 inch wide double cut mm -hmm. and then I'll do a do a uh, vertical cut and that'll be my double cut datum right yeah and that's what I use to work back to from this side sweet okay so mm -hmm. when you when you're using the other side of the blade obviously you'll be pulling in the vertical and you'll be pulling in the horizontal because you're using the other side of the blade right yeah yeah okay cool so, um, yeah easy peasy once you're finished um, you can put the shavings deflector back on mm -hmm. another thing is when you're double cutting um, 
with the Peterson, you know, you want to get that step from, you know, you know, we have a, a, a what we call a lead-in, so we will have a, a rather big step. So to remove that, we just put a bottle cap on the on the pivot lock for the horizontal. Literally a bottle cap. Literally a bottle cap. If you set your <laughs> um, if you set your your uh, blade adjustments right and your lead in just perfect, yeah, so yeah. it's appearing and disappearing on the log. And then once you put that you know that bottle cap, probably you may need a little bit more because it's double cutting, but um, it, this really depends on sort of what you're wanting to cut. So we're talking beer bottle cap, not Coke bottle cap. So you could prepare the beer for you know once you finish milling. <laughs> cool, thank you. Um, so what what do you reckon the most popular kind of um, match up is I suppose with blades and, and motors. Is it this one? The 10 and 35? This has been the most popular for the ATS's. Mm. The bigger blade and the more powerful motor for sure. Yeah. yeah. So people are wanting wanting a lot of power. They're going to be doing some pretty big cuts in the log and stuff. Yeah, that versatility. Um, yeah. The extra horsepower for harder harder woods just makes it a little bit easier to cut. Yeah, cool. And um, if so when people purchase obviously they've got they can upgrade different parts of the mill but there's also a whole lot of accessories that we sell so with the ats purchases um what's the most popular accessory that you would sell with the ats for the ats and most of the other mills it seems to be the clip-on slabber people really like that ability to cut big slabs um, there seems to be a really big market growing for them right. um, some premium prices coming out of them too mm -hmm. um, on top of that, a lot of people are using planer blades in our new sanding kit as well to finish them just that little bit more to get them to that next step. That's awesome. So the clip-on slabber is, and the sanding kit and the planer blade, they're all available for all of our mills, yes. right? Yes, I mean, except the correct. dedicated yeah. slabber, but yeah. For the dedicated slabber. Yeah, yeah. cool. So for all our sawmills, you know, mm. those uh, accessories are available. Um, you know, some some people, uh, some owners have um, a DWS mm. and a sawmill, mm. and you know, some of the comments from the guys is, is that they're pretty much using their sawmill as a planer, mm, mm. you know, for for dressing those big wide slabs. Right. Yeah. And as you were saying, there's tons of value in slabs, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants that for a big shop. Um, so, what application would an ATS be um, most suited to? So, someone calls up, um, they tell you. It's really in the name. It's the all-terrain sawmill, so it's really excellent for when you have to set it up remote areas, dragging it out into the bush, setting up in steeper terrain. Obviously, we're in a nice flat paddock here, which makes setup super easy, but it gives you that versatility. It's got a really low center of gravity compared to the other mills with a box-type frame. Right, yeah. It's a single winch. Um, this one has a low center of gravity, which is great yeah. for using... Um, Remote areas. Yeah, because we sell tons of ATSs to um, Pacific Island countries, eh? So I guess that yeah, yeah makes so, sense. Uh, that low center of gravity is just ideal for uh, for setting up on on sort of rougher terrain or sloping terrain. Yeah. Okay? Um, and you know because it doesn't have the box height frame, the, the you know the, the ATS bed frame is a lot lighter, so it's a you know. It just makes it a little bit easier to, for operating it, you know, in those rougher terrains. Also, having the suspended tracks just makes it easier to set up for level as well if you don't have a level yourself. Cool. Um, I'm just there's a distraction over there. Um, it's about four years old, and it's being very polite by saying, "Excuse me, won't be a minute." Good boy. The perils of live video. Um, anyway, so thanks guys for that. Um, so I mean. Most people watching will know that Petersons were the original designer of the commercial portable swing blade sawmill. Um, but there are, um, we politely call them replica mills on the market. Um, but we stand by our product 100%. We know that it's, it's the best one out there. So what, um, what's a couple of advantages of a Peterson over a um, other brand swing blade mill? Um. A lot of the, you know, a lot of the components are manufactured out of um, aluminium and stainless steel, so they're, you know, really durable. Um, but a lot of it's to do with the design features and, mm. their, and their benefits. You know, just the, the positive locking system on the. Um, like that's easy to pivot, eh? You want to try and pivot another swing blade out there, and yeah, it's, it's spring loaded, so 
Yeah, look at that, I'll just lock mm. it in. It's, it's so much easier. Mm. You know, we've got, uh, for the ATS, you've got the side-by-side -side winches. So, mm -hmm. you know, basically, you know, if you're a little bit of out um, from one winch to the other, you know, over an 8-inch or 10-inch wide board, it's, it's the variation is neg negligible. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you know, if you're uh, having your sizing winches from one end to the other, um, you're a little bit out, you know, over a 3.7 or 4 metre log, you know, the variation in that board will be quite a bit. Right, yeah, so yeah. It, it takes out a, a lot of variables, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, adjusting the mill in a different way. And our motor is higher? Is that right? Our engine's higher? Yeah, we, we offer quite a few options, obviously. Right, yeah. And we have more powerful options mm -hmm. than most of the competition as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the motor is up a lot higher, mm. so um, basically the motor is further away from the blade. And that's okay. a sawdust thing, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so then you're getting less sawdust build up mm. around the engine. Mm. You know, as you can see, you know, hardly anything gets up here really, you know. Um, and these little shields here to stop anything from coming up anyway, mm -hmm. you know, or reduce it. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, and obviously the, the other... Um, portable sawmills on the market that people will be really familiar with, I would say. The majority of people are bandsaws, um, which definitely have their place in, in certain applications, but we um, find our mills are, are a bit more versatile, you reckon? What are a couple of advantages of Peterson over bandsaws? Well, versatility is definitely it. Um, for example, we could quarter saw this log right now that we've opened up without having to move it. Um, we could do it absolutely in place. If you had a bandsaw, there's a lot of log handling. You'd be rolling it and mm. trying to um, you know, basically cut it into quarters. Mm. With big logs, that's very difficult. Mm. Um, big logs is another thing. These mills can handle very big logs for their very portability. A bandsaw that could handle similar size logs. These ones, this 10 inch could handle a 1.5 meter diameter log. Mm -hmm. You need a very very big bandsaw to handle anything close to that yeah yeah for sure um because with the peterson mills obviously you um if you've seen the how-to video on our website mm -hmm. um you walk forward cutting in horizontal yep. then you pivot the blade and you walk mm -hmm. backwards cutting in the vertical position so you're selecting every single board you cut out of this thing so you can get some yeah, really good recovery eh? Right. You know, yeah. once you've opened up a log you can see where the defects are mm. um as Isra said you know um these are, you know, you, you're cutting out a lot of double handling, mm, okay, mm. Um, because you can actually grade as you go. Yeah. And yeah. the, you know, the benefit really is the mill moves around the log, mm. okay. So you, you don't need any fancy, you know, log decks and stuff like that. You know? Yeah, yeah, and and also it was transported um, on the trailer. Yep. Right there. So yeah, that was pretty easy too. So this mill's off to Tahiti, the fabulous Tahiti yep. next week, and we're not, but yeah, never mind. We wish we were. But, <laughs> but, you know, um, so we've brought this out. We've we've tested um, Kevin's mill, and um, we're really happy with the blade adjustments. Um, yeah. Uh, a note to the factory, we didn't have to touch anything, it Sweet. was perfect, mm -hmm. yeah, so well done guys. <laughs> yeah, 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 credit to the factory guys, eh? Yeah, yeah. Awesome, well thank you heaps for your time and thanks to Kevin for um, allowing his ATS to be a star before it even hits the ground. Um, so thanks everybody for watching and uh, we'll try and do another live video for you soon.